What's up, Wolverine Nation? Welcome to week 14 of Waiver Wire. I'm Jay Camayo. I'm Victor Torres. And I'm Matthew Bartorin. And before we get the show off, we'd like to congratulate our Jesuit brother, Caleb Williams, who just won the Heisman. Went to Gonzaga, Gonzaga Prep up there in Washington, D.C. And also another brother of ours who goes to here, Belen, Brendan the Goody commits to Ohio State for baseball. So no matter what, no matter what, no 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 Wolverines are Jesuits showing out. Uh, Jesuits showing out all over the world. Guys, what, what was thoughts on last week's football? <laughs> Dolphins. That's all I got to say. Yeah, it was it was a rough it was a rough game, but um, you know Saturday night against the Bills again, uh, we beat them last time around, so we'll see if we can. That's gonna be. Yeah, a I think this is the first time that the Dolphins lose and the Saints don't. The Saints <laughs> run by, so I mean I'll take the win no matter what. Right. So I mean get, that, I think I think we should get right into it, Jake. Let's get right in. You read my mind, Victor. My pickup. So my wait, pick wait, up, wait, wait, wait. Oh wait, we have a crown oh, to give. Oh wait, Hello. we do have to give Guys, a crown. Guys, on. last week, even though it wasn't close at all, Matthew won. Congrats to Matthew. His first of the year. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually not, but. <laughs> All right. Congrats All right. to you, man. Now let's get into the let's show. Let's get into it. Hey, be careful with the head. We got ahead of ourselves. There you go. Ahead of ourselves with the head of that Wolverine. That was so funny. let's, let's that get was right into the show, guys. One, so, my guy's only played in two games in his NFL career, and they've been in the past two weeks. Jamison Williams, first former first round pick, 12th overall for the Detroit Lions. <coughs> now, this guy, his only. Catch, right? His only catch, right? Yeah, his only target. Yeah, his only, his only, one of his only targets was a deep touch that you just saw on the screen right here. And he's obviously the first round pick, and they, they, they're they going to give him the ball. Once he gets adjusted to the NFL setting, I think he's going to just thrive. And if you're in a 12-man league, PPR, you're going to the playoffs, and you need a receiver or a flex option, or even a bench guy. I mean, he's going he's gonna to fill he's this sneaky role. Sneaky little bench guy. Sneaky yeah. little bench guy. And this guy is one of the fastest receivers, not, not only in the draft, because he was the fastest receiver in the draft, Probably in the NFL. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. What a deep, deep play target. Uh, I mean, this guy blazes down the defenders. I mean, great, great deep ball receiver. It's a solid pickup. I had him the week that he was supposed to come back. He didn't come back. I dropped him, and now he's obviously scoring 40-yard touchdowns. So, clearly I did something wrong, but I'm all in on Jameson. Me too. Jamo. I mean, I hope the same was drafted him, but we got another rookie receiver, which I'll be talking about later in the show. Victor, who's your pickup? Um, my guy? My pickup is pretty good. I got Brock Purdy, wow. quarterback for the 49ers, the now quarterback for the 49ers. Mr. Irrelevant has taken the show in San Francisco, has played phenomenal the past two weeks, dominated against my Dolphins, and threw, had, not threw, he had three total touchdowns against that. It's a solid Bucks defense. I'm Very, not going to say what uh, say. Look at that. Is. That play there, he gets, but he was, he looked super good under pressure. He was getting leveled and looked phenomenal under that pressure. And the biggest thing is we're heading into fantasy playoffs. His playoff schedule is really, really easy. He's got Las Vegas. He's got Seattle. Which, I mean, Seattle's defense is solid. He's got Las Vegas, Seattle, and the Washington, which they have a good safety duo. But other than that, it's pretty mid. So I, I really do. I think if Brock Purdy, obviously, he's got he's going to have less than five weeks as a starter. But he's good. He's looked very well. I think I think he's due for some, some nice games. And he has weapons. Kyler Murray just went down. There's a couple quarterbacks falling off, falling off the rankings. So maybe Brock Purdy is available in 93% of leagues. So <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine <laughs> I nobody has him. But I'm all in on Brock. Yeah, and he has the weapons around him to be successful. Even though he just lost Debo Samuel, I mean, I don't Jawan Jennings, much. Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle. Obviously. This goes this on, guy, and on, this and guy's. on. And he has a guy in the back pocket called Kyle Shanahan, which would give him he's got that, the best. He's got, he's got that brick wall, Mr. Trent Williams. So yeah, he'll be fine. I mean, he's got the guys around him to be very successful in these next few weeks, which I hope so. But Matt, who's going to succeed? Uh, well, my pickup is Jarek McKinnon. Uh, okay. From the Chiefs, so he had a my fantasy savior this week. He had a huge game this past week with over 100 yards and multiple touchdowns, and also the week before had a nice 14 point game in week ter 13. Um, so, and this week he also plays the Texans, uh, which is the worst defense against running backs in the league. Um, and this is not a guy who dominates the running game. Per se, he dominates the passing game. The so that is he that, had the, the running game guys. Those those 100 yards and multiple touchdowns were all in the air. <laughs> he had seven catches last week for 119 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, so I think with Mahomes as his quarterback, he's a you know now especially recently he's been being used a lot more in the passing game. So I think mm -hmm. that he could provide some value as like a flex option or maybe even more if you know you really need him. Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you gotta take it. You gotta take a look at who we just played this week. That Broncos defense has been phenomenal the oh, whole season. Oh, one hundred percent. And then you go out here, you have cat, you have over hundred yards, two touchdowns. He's a good look, and obviously, obviously Pacheco dominates that run side. Mm -hmm. But I think 
I think the Chiefs are going to have some fun this week. You know, Andy Reid's going to oh, yeah, see what he sure. can and can't do against Houston, mm -hmm. which is this is basically like a this is like a test game. But don't, let's not sleep on the Texans. They must be the Yeah, the Texans are a great team. I mean, but as a fantasy running, running back, I mean, pass catch is way more the like volume. Yeah, like it's sure. just the point with the catch and the yardage. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy how how much damage that can do. To your Jerick's, point. Jerick's a good guy. He started for me this week, so I I love the pick, man. And you know who's gonna, be, who's gonna do a lot of damage this week oh, and score a lot of points this week? <coughs> Justin Fields. Ooh. He's a guy who's been coming up on the show a lot recently. And now, even though I know you're worried about three, uh, two things: shoulder injury, and two, he's playing one of the best, if not the best, defenses in the NFL. An insane Philadelphia and defense. Eagles. Now, obviously, the Bears team shouldn't win this week, and I mean. Why, why should they? They're, the Eagles are the one. I think they just came out as the number one ranked team in the NFL, according to NFL and uh, like twelve to the analysts minutes. and things like that. I mean, he they're going to get pressure on him, so they're going to use his legs, and we know how much Justin Fields loves to use his legs. Has yeah. 150 rushing yards. Seems like it's like nothing new for Justin Fields in his young NFL career. I mean, and even though his shoulder isn't 100, 110%, I mean, I I still don't think I still think he's going to throw some deep balls downfield to um. To chase Claypool and yeah. maybe get some big play touchdowns. He's got the he's got the legs. He's got the movement. He's got like he's got real NFL speed. He runs I think he runs a four four, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of people that run a four four in the other. I mean there is, but there's not a lot of defenders in that front seven area that run a four four. So if he gets past that front seven, he's got to beat a safety. He's gone. Yeah, and a fifty yard touchdown. That's his, that's the big play potential that you get with Justin Fields. I mean, mm -hmm. who's but Victor? You know we're coming up with intro to everyone's starts and sits this week. You know who's a guy that has big play potential this week? Um, you know me. I love I love me my tight ends. And this <laughs> week I'm going with the chief, the former Kane, David Njoku. Um, so a guy that has kind of been had a very quiet, phenomenal tight end season. Obviously, Danger. we've been saying it. Tight ends are super hard to come by this season. Njoku's missed three games and had his bye week. He's still seventh overall for tight ends. Yeah. So recently, especially, he's had a lot of targets and he's been getting those red zone targets. Um, and maybe Deshaun Watson's got a got a safety blanket now. Obviously, Watson hasn't looked phenomenal, but. He's got that safety blanket, possibly. And the Baltimore defense is mediocre against the tight end position. Obviously, we saw like, earlier in the season, Mike Kosicki scored two touchdowns or just one. I don't remember. Whatever. Point mm -hmm. is that the Ravens don't do phenomenal against mediocre tight ends. It's a rivalry game. Najoku's had... I've always thought he was a super talented tight end. Yeah, but he is. he hasn't really produced. He's starting to produce. So I think Najoku's due for another good week. Um, he's coming off a touchdown and multiple, multiple big, big plays. So... Um, I'm, I'm in for I'm in for David Njoku this week. Yeah, I I got this guy in fantasy and thank God I did because he kind of carried my season into not getting last in my fantasy <laughs> league. But um, I mean this guy got 18 points last week and he can he's a big he's a big body he gets anywhere big catch radius. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean I you love. Say a one-handed snag against the Bucks. I, I mean, did. I love me. So, I love me. I love. My, I love David Njoku. I also got to show some love to my former Canes. I feel exactly. like yeah, it's been a while since. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. Matt, who's the guy that's going to blow up for you this week? Uh, well, I'm going to start Miles Sanders this week. Ooh. Now, he has a very favorable matchup versus a Chicago defense. Uh -huh. um, and he's been kind of, you know, as everybody who owns him in fantasy knows, he's been kind of up and down yep. throughout the year. Uh, but two out of the last three games have been multiple touchdown performances, uh, huge performances from him. Um, so I guess I guess it's because the Eagles are so dominant that yeah. they run the ball a lot in the second half because they're dominating by so much. Mm -hmm. um, and his involvement in the pass game too also helps him out. So I think with this matchup versus Chicago, I think you know he's a trustworthy starter. He's coming off a huge game against the Giants. He scored huge two game. touchdowns, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two so touchdowns. obviously he's he's got a lot of confidence, and as we said, you know we're, we're keeping the trend here in uh, Chicago, Philly, wherever the game's at. <coughs> but I do like. Miles Sanders, the run game is dominant, and that front seven of the Bears is bad. So yeah, and last year he had zero rush, zero touchdowns. Zero touchdowns. Last year. And this yeah, year he's, this been, year going he's been going off. I mean, yeah. I'm good, good for him. I mean, you know, he was my sit a few weeks ago, and he had 35 points that week. You know, Jake's so he's a uh, really talented. Sit. I cannot really, sit running backs. Really talented. Which I can, I can't sit running backs, but I shouldn't because. Speaking of sit, we beat the Amari Cooper allegations. We finally that's sat. Right. That's what we we sat Amari Matt. Cooper, and Congrats he finally did bad. But Jake, who are you sitting? Now, now, Victor oh, yes. and Matthew, it pains my soul and my heart to say this as a Saints fan. It pains my heart to say this. Chris Olave. I mean, I think the Saints are going to win this week. Hopefully, don't fingers crossed, don't want to lose. He's the best receiver in the rookie class, obviously, but the Saints' offense is 
really bad. And I mean, I I don't even know what to say. Pete Carmichael, he doesn't draw up good plays. I mean, they he, a lot of it gets the ball, obviously. I mean, but this Falcons secondary, I mean, they have some. They have a, I mean, an above average secondary. With AJ T AJ Terrell and I, don't, I can't really name any other. Yeah, that's Falcons about AJ Terrell. <laughs> but I mean, as the number one receiver in this offense at this point in the season, because Michael Thomas is down and Jarvis Landry has been coming back, but still not number one. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean. It's, it's, Andy gut feeling. it's a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling because Andy Dalton last week. I mean, coming off the bye, hopefully you'll offer their production from him. I want him to do good. He's on my fantasy team. But, um, I mean, Andy Dalton at QB isn't a reliable option. And even if Jameis comes in the game, he does have that big play, big play potential with Jameis, but I, still, I, don't, I, I can't see myself. I love the confidence, Jake. You know what? Putting down, putting down a good player that you like. It's smart. Thank you, Victor. Who's the player that you'll be putting down this week? Um, I feel like this name's been said a couple times in this in this session, not this session. Uh, Mike Evans, wide receiver for the Bucks, right. obviously renowned athlete, talented player, like re well respected in the NFL. His last three games, though, five point one, nine point nine, eight point four. He's played some pretty tough defenses, and I, there's nothing really to it. He just takes on another tough defense in Cincinnati. Uh, the Bucks offense has lost a huge step for whatever reason. It seems like they came off the bye and they just they flatlined. Um, Evans hasn't played phenomenal. He's had a couple. He's had a couple na nasty drops the past yeah. couple weeks, and I think the only bright side that's come out of his past couple weeks is he had a super long touchdown, got called back, so he hasn't looked great in the past couple weeks. So I'm more in on just sitting him, maybe putting him at your flex, but I would. I'm staying away from Mike Evans this week just because that Cincinnati defense is tough. They got Jesse Bates, Von Bell, Chidobi Awuzie, Apple. He's an all star. We know that, but. I, I, I'm straying away from starting Mike Evans this week. I 100% agree with you there. I don't like Mike Evans. Right. I mean, I sat him a couple weeks ago. So. And it worked. Exactly. I mean, nine and points against the Saints. Mm -hmm. But yeah, tough defense, tough matchup. Not playing good. This looks like without Bruce Arians, this Bucks team is... It's, it's flatlined. I mean, they, if it's, I think Chris Godwin's been doing better. He's also. been doing amazing. Yeah, he's, well, he's been getting Brady, a lot of volume. If, I think if Brady's not running the offense, they, they look flat. So, mm -hmm. I'm in on Mike. I'm, I'm in on Mike sitting the bench this week. Me too. I mean, thank you for that, Victor. After sitting the Saints player, I had to hear, I had to get my mood back up, and the Bucks player sit, <laughs> got me right back up there. <laughs> so, Matt, who's your, uh, who's you. your sit? So, my sit this week is Nick Chubb. Oh, uh, that's an, that's a, a big one. That's a yeah, he's risky one. Obviously, an awesome know. running back. You know, top ten, top five, probably in top my opinion. Top two, he ain't two. Um, but back to back games under ten points has been pretty, you know, digressive in. Uh, that is a phenomenal word. Yeah. Hold on. That's an SAT <laughs> Give me that word. That's an SAT <laughs> um, With Deshaun Watson at quarterback, for some reason, he's just digressed a lot, and uh, like fantasy-wise. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and this week he plays a top 10 Ravens defense uh, versus the run. So I don't know. I just don't really trust him this week. Um, he's definitely – it's definitely been quite a surprise considering how solid the run game's been. Yeah. For him that's this like, year, that's the Cleveland's name. Yeah, no, it is. It's just run. And then with Jacoby Brissett, he was you know constant, you know twenty point, fifteen point performances, yeah. like you know. And now you know he's digressing a lot with Deshaun Watson at quarterback. I mean, so. when you give a guy two hundred thirty million guaranteed, Something I think like Kevin that. Stefanski's trying to give the ball to Deshaun Watson. Yeah. But I mean, but not, it hasn't been looking pretty. It's not, it's not yeah, it's looked a little ugly, but they've also tried to rely a lot more on the fact that Deshaun Watson is a quarterback that, in theory, is worth 200 something million. Uh, he's a, a great thrower. Thrower, that's not a word. Um, great quarterback. <laughs> great quarterback. Thank you, Jake. But I think it's just Nick Chubb is, I think he's lost his carries. Not lost his carries, but he's like. He's losing some touches. Like, with Deshaun Watson. He's losing in. his five or ten extra carries, which, uh, the way that Deshaun Watson's played, or Deshaun Watson, well, the way that Nick Chubb has played his extra five or ten carries is a 30 yard touchdown. Yeah. 40 yard touchdown. Yeah, touchdown. So, I, I like the same. Yeah. So. You know, Appreciate great it. show, guys. I mean, great picks all around the board, even though. It's, fantasy, yeah, it's, like fantasy, it's fantasy playoffs. So playoff season, so maybe. This is. You. This is the time point where point you gotta to listen to us. I won't point to the camera. You should listen to our picks and win the championship, win the fantasy championship, win that uh, win that big prize. Hopefully, you you get at the end of the year. But guys, any last two cents before we end the show? I think we're I think we're all ready to. Have we ever seen a three way tie on our picks? I don't think we have. I think for the sake of us and the Christmas holiday spirit, let's get a three way tie this week. I like that. Let's let's shake hands all around. 
I like that. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot too. And hopefully another Saints W against division rival Falcons. A lot of division play on on the desk this week. Yeah, I noticed that. Bills, true, Dolphins, yeah. and Saints, Falcons. Mm -hmm. But one's away and one's home. Yeah, I don't know how the Dolphins are going to handle that cold weather. Um, you know, Buffalo is a rough place to play in, so especially I mean, in December. Uh, to be fair, they did early in the season when they played us. They did play in Miami. You know, in the in degree September, weather. yeah. So, so you know, hey, seven, it's, seven, it's, it even opposite. Out. Seven seven inches of snow, by the way. Seven inches of snow. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that is a lot of snow. That's, lot. that's all you. <laughs> that's a lot of show. I mean, but hey, hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, good week of fantasy from every single Let's get team a three-way tie in the NFL. All right. I like that. You guys like that? Yeah, we like three -way that. Three-way tie. If we get a three-way tie, we will all get Wolverine heads next week. All right. All I, right. I guarantee it to the audience. If you're watching, we appreciate you watching. Well, Wolverine Nation, I mean, that's the show this week. Great show, guys. You know, I'm Jake Camejo. I'm Victor Torres. And I'm Matthew Barturin. And we appreciate you watching.